Welcome. This is a fence project that I built over a couple of summers. You can see this uh, circles basically our entire yard and just ends on the, the sides of our house. So it was a pretty big project. I think there are about 33 panels. So I started off with um, a drawing like this and I did this in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, to kind of get all the design things worked out. This is my list. I'll let you read through it. Um, probably number four is the most important. Um, find your lot line, but then call Digger's Hotline and have everything marked and then double check to make sure when you dig down, you don't hit anything. So once I did all these important steps, checked with my city. Um, let's look at how we uh, set the fence posts. So I decided with my three foot fence that I was going to put the posts in the ground two feet and I marked my post hole digger at two feet and dug down. You can see I have a line that marks the lot. Um, and I found my lot pins and put that string on there and here I'm just setting the posts. I went and found some base gravel at our local nursery and bought this in five gallon buckets. That's what I could haul in my um, SUV. It really didn't take that many, um, but there probably was three or four trips. I can get seven per trip. So once we dug the holes, the holes were about 11, 12 inches um, in diameter and two feet deep. I filled the bottom with about three inches of gravel and really packed it down and then filled the holes full of this gravel um, and packed it down, put about six inches in and packed it down with this uh, digging bar. Uh, some of them, like the corner posts and the, the gate posts, I concreted them in. So I made sure they were level and I cross braced them like this. Mixed up some general ready mix that you buy in bags um, at your home center and then just kind of dumped it in the holes and made sure I pushed kind of a, a bar down inside there to get all the air bubbles out, but kind of let it build up around the edges like this and then took my, my trowel, tried to knock down all of the, the aggregate down in there and get that concrete cream to come to the top and then smoothed it off at an angle away from the post so all the water would run off. Once I had the posts set, I cut them all to the height. I measured up from the ground. Um, and then this is uh, how we, or how I hung the, the rails. So I like these little brackets that hold two by fours, and these are all galvanized. I needed a lot of them, uh, but it was important for me to be able to take the panels out. So you can see here with the rails set in those, um, I first cut the rails and put them in there, and then I'll start to put the pickets on. So I made this story stick, and you can see I have the picket spaced three and a half inches apart. And then you just adjust the diagonal of it, and you can see uh, this is a closer view of the, the story stick here with um, the pickets marked out on it. And this was about a nine foot stick. And then I just would clamp it to one post um, on one side, clamp it to the other post, aligning these, and just move it diagonally, drop one side until they line up. And then you have the centers of your pickets. And then just use a level to go up and mark them on the rail 2x4s. And they will be evenly spaced. So here's a mark on the 2x4. And then I align the, the picket to it when I put it in. So I aligned the picket um, on the top when I did this. And put a couple of screws in. And then leveled it. Here's one whole panel done. Um, see I lined them up on the bottom of the 2x4. I just cut that angle. Um, in order to get that angle, I just put it up against um, the 2x4 and you can see here on the left, I put it up against there, mark the line, and then cut the angle on um, my miter saw. And then put a couple of screws, or one screw in the top when it was centered on the rail, leveled it, and then put the other screws in. I only put two screws on the top and two screws at the bottom. And then I like this arch idea. So out of this long chunk of cedar, um, this is about, I think, 10 foot long. I made an arch, cut it out, and used this as a template. And I marked it on the top of all of the pickets. And then I cut them off. 
This is what the end result looks like. I cut them all off with a sawzall um, with a pretty fine tooth blade and this went pretty fast doing it this way. And I did take the time to use a belt sander to sand the top so there wasn't a lot of furring on them. I also chamfered the edges a little bit too, um, trying to get the rain to run off of them. And if it was really smooth, I knew it would accept the paint well. So I have two gates, actually I have three gates. Um, this is the front gate. I built this by setting the actual two by fours for the gate um, right where they should be and then building the gate right on the posts like this. So I set everything up, put my pickets on there, except for the two end pickets, and then cut the, uh, the arch on the top of the gate, and then laid it down um, on the ground and put my brace in, and then this is what the brace looks like. That Z brace um, is really helpful so that it doesn't um, bow. Used large galvanized um, hinges and a latch, your basic latch here. I left about 3 8 of an inch um, gap in there and this is what it looks like on the outside. Here's another example of um, using even a longer or making a longer panel spacing everything out where that story stick was at quite an angle but you still just use your level and um, set the pickets up that way and you get a nice even space. There might be a difference of an eighth or a quarter of an inch depending on um, how wide your panel is, but you'll never see that from a distance. So building the post caps, I wanted to do something kind of unique for the top of the posts because they're kind of ornamental. So what I did is I, I built these myself um, and I made them out of a two by six. So this is the two by six chunk and I just put a chamfer on the top, a pretty wide chamfer on the top and then a narrower chamfer on the bottom. You can see them here. So these are basically five and a half by five and a half. I made a ton of these because I think I have like 33 posts. And these are then the smaller pieces on top. These are one by fours. And then I found this molding at the home store, which I thought was kind of a unique molding with outdoor lumber. And I cut a whole bunch of these to make kind of a 45 degree mitered picture frame. And then these go on the underside of the two by six block um, that I cut out. And the whole build looks kind of like this. I put some um, exterior glue on there and then fired a couple of nails into them. And then I glued the top piece on. This is a one by four. So this is three and a half by three and a half. Glued that on the top. And that's what the final piece looks like. I like the shadow lines on it uh, when the sun hits it. So it has a little bit of a molding quality to it. And they really just sit on top of there. You can see this is a big, uh, long stretch, about 75 feet of fence here, um, finished. And how those post caps look. We also took some time to do some landscaping around the fence so I didn't have to mow right up to it or use the string trimmer. So I kind of cut out um, a couple of inches of the lawn and then set the bricks down inside of it and then put landscaping fabric and then the rock. And I'm going to do this, or I did this all the way around the entire fence so that I could just mow right up to the, the bricks and would have hardly any string trimming to do. I'm gonna paint the fence so the string trimmer can be pretty hard on the fence. So for painting, what we did here was, um, I did a water test maybe about a couple weeks after I built it and you can see water is still um, beating up on here. So if it's not soaking in, it's not ready to paint, it's still drying out. Oddly enough, I'm getting pretty low moisture uh, meter readings here. This is 14 and I got a 20 somewhere else, but if the water is still beating up on it, um, I didn't want to paint it. Here I pounded nails in to try and get the, the moisture meter depth way inside and that was 20%. So eight months later, um, it was for the following spring, Eight months later I got 11% and the water test on um, the water soaked in right away so you really have to wait that six to eight months. So my wife and I we picked out um, a paint that matched the siding on our house it's kind of this um, hurricane haze is the middle there and we used this exterior solid um, color stain it's a nice product from our home center made by Pittsburgh and uh, it matched the house pretty well.
So here's one of the panels we did as a test just to paint it. We thought it matched really, really nice. Um, this stuff goes on really well, covers really well too. So here's a look at the finished fence um, after we painted the whole thing. Um, I did one coat and that's what this looks like after one coat. Um, I let it dry for a year and I'm going to do another coat um, this coming summer, um, which will be a year out. But we're really happy. Um, our dog loves it too because now the dog can play in the backyard without a tie out or a leash or anything and just go wherever he wants to go. All right. Thank you.